In this video, I'm going to introduce Marmalade Quick, walk through building a Marmalade Quick game from scratch, and deploy it to a Windows Phone 8 device. Quick is a plugin for Marmalade that you download separately in version 6.3 and earlier. I'm going to open up the 6.3 SDK. You can see here I've got Quick already installed. If we have a look in here, there's a tools folder, and inside here is the Quick launch pad. So this is basically a nice little GUI front end for Quick. You get a set of projects down the left. You can import existing projects from regular Marmalade MKB project files, or you can create new ones. Rather than play around with examples, I'm going to build something from scratch. So if I hit new project, let's give it a nice name like Quick Demo. And by default, it just puts it in your user folder. So basically, when I hit create here, it creates all of the C++ parts for your project, gives you all the basic assets you need, and gives you a nice kind of empty Lua file to start with. You can set things like publisher and bundle and version numbers. For the project today, I'm just going to leave all of this blank. We can always set that later when we try to deploy to a store. If I go to open folder here, you can see the project it's created. So here's our project file. Inside resources, we've got uh, our main Lua file, and you can add more Lua to that if you want. So I'm just going to open that up with Notepad, I think. There is an ID that ships with the SDK called Zero Brain, which we can have a quick look at later. And if I go to test and hit launch here, it'll open it up in the Marmalade Simulator. So there's no need to touch the code in ID if you don't want to. You get some trace over here on the right, and on the left is the simulator. First time you run this on the desktop, it's a little bit slow because it loads a load of DLLs and stuff on Windows. And as you can see, nothing very interesting, but we've got a little bit of trace at the bottom here saying, this is my app. You get the same simulator options as the C++ SDK, so you can play around with all the different APIs here. If I go to my code here, I'm going to put something a bit more interesting in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create just a nice little sort of background, I think. We have this thing called the director. So the director is basically a singleton that manages everything in the game. I'm going to ask it to create a sprite. Put it at zero, zero. And I'm going to use this texture. It's called Epic Sky. It's the only epic thing in this game. It's going to be pretty minimal. Also, we're going to actually want to have a texture. So if I just go to my Marmalade SDK 6.3, inside the quick folder, there's a folder called data, which contains lots of useful examples and code and that kind of thing. So Inside examples, there's tons of examples, everything from writing some text to building an entire game. Uh, and there's a texture folder here with lots of useful textures just to sort of get you started. So I'm just going to copy that textures folder. And drop that into my projects. And in here, we should have that epic sky JPEG. Yep. So basically, save that, switch back here, and just press Control R to reload. And there we go, that's our background there. So nothing too complicated or exciting, but very simple to get a, an image straight into your game. Then we're gonna add some ground. So we'll call it ground. This is just gonna be something for items to bounce off. So what we're gonna build is basically a nice little kind of 2D physics-based simulation, which you can turn into more of a proper game later. So we'll create another sprite. As you can see, it supports sort of typical image types, so JPEGs, PNGs, bitmaps. Let's reload that again. And I've missed something. So here, it's good you can see from the trace here what I've done wrong. I've added an extra bracket for no reason. There we go. Uh, and then what we'll do now is add some actual bits to it. So Rather than uh, type this in so I'm going to cheat and copy some bits from earlier. So uh, let's just take this piece. So what we're doing here is we're creating an event here called touch. Basically there is an idea of a, a touch event in Quick. 
by registering touch with this uh, function here, this will run every time the screen is ever touched or clicked on with the mouse. So basically, when the event begins, it's going to create a ball. So again, we create a sprite object, this time we're using the beach ball PNG, and we're setting it to be positioned at the point of where you've clicked. So that's event X and event Y. So if I save this, reload again, Basically, I can just stick loads of beach balls in here. They don't do anything very interesting at the moment. So, something a bit smarter, we want to add a little bit of physics. Physics is very simple. As you can see, all I have to do basically is add physics to a node. There's a built in physics engine built on Box2D. Basically, as soon as you add anything to the physics, it'll turn on physics for the whole game. So, let's just drop this in here. B is our ball. And then to give them something to bounce off, we'll just add some physics to the ground as well. So the ground is going to be a static object, which basically means it doesn't move. So if I reload that. And then if I close this down, just to show something a little bit more advanced, I've got a slightly larger version here. So this has got um, some sort of multiple ball types and some items appearing at the points of collisions and so on. We launch this, I think. And there you go, very few lines of code have basically got a nice little kind of full physics simulation here going in 2D. So you can see you could quite easily build something with, you know, objects being projected at each other to try and knock things out of the way. We're not going to turn into a proper game for now. What I'm going to do is actually put it onto device. So if I close this down, there are some uh, published tabs and test tabs here for some of the basic uh, device types. Uh, we're going to use the advanced tab. So that has a deploy tool on it here, and you can basically support any platform that Marmalade supports and quick through this. We're going to deploy to a Windows 8 device, so in the deployment tool here, from build, I want to pick Windows 8 architecture, like this. Platform selection, Windows 8. Won't bother with any of the settings, and then basically just hit package and install. It'll create a zap file and push it to the device. And there we can see our build on the device, so same as on the desktop, touch to create the objects. Slightly different here because the screen is bigger than our test app was. You can see the sky is basically a small bit in the bottom corner here, but I can click anywhere I want, and if I wanted to, I could build the app a bit better to scale nicely to the resolutions. You can see it's running a little bit slowly on the device. Basically, we've got all of the Lua debugging options turned on, so every time some garbage collection happens, it's tracing to the output and writing something to a file. Every time any collision happens, it's doing loads of extra processing. We can turn all of that off through the configuration options if we want. And that's our Marmalade Quick Game up and running on a Windows Phone 8 device.